In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my very favorite advanced investing books. I call these books advanced investing books because they're not just the typical investing that you see where you take a percent of your assets and put them in stocks and bonds and maybe cash and then hold them indefinitely long term. Uh, these books are more about a little more advanced investing, maybe tactical investing or investing in alternative assets or alternative assets in addition to just stocks and bonds. Not only this, I've got some great books that are more about mindset and about trends and your skills and that type of thing that I think are really important to know in order to both make money and also to keep money after you've made that money however you choose to invest it. I want to mention that I've set up these books on my website in an article that you can see here and I've got links to where you can purchase the books at Amazon. These are affiliate links so if you purchase through my affiliate link I receive a very small commission but I would appreciate that because it helps me support this free channel. I've also got an Amazon storefront now all set up. I'm super excited about it with these books as well as some of my favorite products so I'll put a link to that in the description as well as a link to my article. So okay, here's so the article on my website retirecertain.com and the very first book on the list is One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. Now let me explain for just a second that this these books sort of took me, they laid the foundation for the journey from originally being a stock investor to an asset allocation investor to now a more tactical investor that also owns alternative investments. So these books help me along the way, along that journey that's taken place over a few decades. But the very first book I wanted to put was one of my favorites and it is Peter Lynch, Wall Up on Wall Street. And the reason I love this book, I get it, it's old, right? It's from the early 1990s. But Peter Lynch was one of the best, if not the best, I think still the best mutual fund manager ever. He was able to manage millions and millions of dollars and still be the top performing fund manager in the 19. 80s and 90s so don't quote me on those exact dates um, but Peter Lynch there's a lot to learn from him in this book I love his peg ratio I've always remember it that where he takes the growth rate plus the yield and compares that to the uh, price that the stock is selling and there are so many tips like this and other good tips that you can learn from Peter Lynch so that's the first book on my list and then the next book, oh, I forgot I've got props here. The next book, and I've actually read all these books. Like I went through my shelf and pulled books off that I wanted to put in this list. This isn't just something I put together so you'll go to my affiliate store on Amazon. Okay, so how to make money in stocks. Love, love, love this book. Uh, it sort of took me from fundamental investing only about stocks to understanding how technical analysis played a role in investing and understanding also about growth stocks and this was, was by William O'Neill. He's the founder of Investors Business Daily. He has a strategy called Can Slim that he teaches in his books. I have several of his books. This one in particular is one of my favorites. If you're a stock picker then you'll want to pick up how to make money in stocks and check it out for sure. The next book on my list is The Intelligent Investor. Now you'll notice that my copy looks quite different and that's because this was my dad's copy. So it's super old and it has even some underlines and highlights in it that my dad made and one of my favorite things from this book that I want to read to you I have in my article is this and and I, I mention this because so many investors still cling to what is in this book it's great information it's about value investing and it's about buying an asset for its true value and I still love that I love undervalued investments but this might surprise you this book has this information 
or this sentence in it. On the whole, it may be better for the investor to do his stock buying except, except when the general market level is much higher than can be justified by well-established standards of value. What is that telling us? That's telling us that sometimes stocks, and I'm sure this applies to other assets as well, are all overvalued. They're all overvalued. And sometimes it's better to not buy stocks at that time. I believe it's sometimes better to sell stocks at that time because I'm more of a tactical investor. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But even this book that so many diehard traditional investing investors, I should say, uh, love and base their investing around. Warren Buffett was a student of, I'm almost positive he worked for Benjamin Graham, the author of The Intelligent Investor. And so many people are diehard believers in value investing, but I want to point that out that even with this classic by Benjamin Graham, he pointed out that there are times when the market is overvalued. What does that hint toward? Sort of market timing, sort of looking at economic factors and overall financial markets to decide where we're going to invest, which is one of my big, you know, things that I really, really believe in. If you, you already know, if you follow my, my videos. The next book is, looks quite different than the one on my website because mine is an older copy, uh, is The All Season Investor by Martin Pring. I love this. Let me point out on, on the cover, successful strategies for every stage in the business cycle. And that's what it's about. We have investments and those investments respond differently. The returns are different based on the economic cycle and along with Federal Reserve intervention, of course. But that is what affects our investment returns. You hear it here over and over again if you follow my videos. The next book on the list is Mastering the Market Cycle by Howard Marks. If you're starting to question whether a long-term buy and hold asset allocation model is the best strategy for you, this book will interest you, I think. It's a practical and easy read book by Howard Marks, who is the Oak Tree Capital Management co-founder. And he explains market cycles in a really easy to understand way. And I've got a note on here that on page 212, the, his market assessment is, is excellent. And his guide to the market assessment is worth the price of the book alone. The next book on my list is the IV portfolio. I probably have more sticky notes than uh, markings on this book than any of the other ones. This is by Meb Faber. Faber. Uh, this book is uh, based on Meb's research about how the top endowment funds invest their money and how they avoid bear markets. What I really, really love about this book, and again, this is an older book. These are all older and bo older books uh, because they're classic, they're timeless, and I think it's important to look beyond what's just happened in recent years, even what's happened in the last two or three decades, certainly two decades to make our investment decisions, to be informed investors. So this book is excellent in that it opens our eyes to that fact as, as well as how we can structure an ETF portfolio that goes beyond just stocks and bonds. So many investors only own stocks and bonds and this was an excellent introduction into adding other types of assets into our portfolio. You may have seen where I talk about, I had structured an ETF portfolio with stocks, bonds, as well as alternative assets, commodities, real estate, etc. And I sold cover calls on it for an older family member that didn't want a lot of risk, but she wanted that income. And, and Meb Faber's IV portfolio was one of the strategies that I use to put that portfolio together. I actually use three different strategies. And this was one of the books that helped me, guide me through creating that. Now, what I really love about this book is that Meb goes beyond just that buy and hold with the, the asset allocation 
model that he recommends, he starts explaining and does a great job of explaining how you can segue into being a more tactical investor. Instead of just buying and holding, that you buy and sell assets, maybe rotate that portfolio as the economic conditions, <laughs> economic cycles change. And that is what I do now. So great book. All right, the next book on my list is Unexpected Returns. This is by Ed Easter Easterling. It really helps you understand how secular market cycles work, and this is related to changes in the economy. Super, super book for understanding that. The next book on my list is Jim Rogers' Hot Commodities. Jim Rogers is one of the most knowledgeable investors about commodities. He has some great information. He's been wrong on the market several times, but I really think he's one of the smartest investors when it comes to commodities, which I think play an important role, or certainly, I don't, don't like the word should, but commodities I think are important for most portfolios. The next book on my list is by a university professor, The Perfect Portfolio by Leland Hefner. This book first introduced me to how easy it was to structure a tactical portfolio that is even automated, that's easy to implement yourself. I personally don't necessarily recommend, I don't recommend anything because I'm not a financial advisor. I don't use this strategy now because I like assets beyond just stocks and bonds, and I there were some concerns I had about this particular strategy, but it's a great way to segue into understanding how this works. Then the next book on my list, now I'm getting into trading books. So we went from sort of stock picking, which is how most people start out investing, if they're not just following an asset allocation model. If they were, then they wouldn't, it wouldn't be an advanced investing book because that's really not an advanced model. It's an event in basic sort of beginner way to invest is that asset allocation. And then uh, stock picking is a little more advanced. And then I got into more tactical investing, more investing based on various types of assets in addition to stocks and bonds, as well as maybe considering the overall economic cycles in your investing. So this has gone from sort of sort of early uh, intermediate to more advanced. Now I'm looking at some trading books, and the reason I like these is because I think they're really, really great for mindset. I also find them quite entertaining. I've traded myself. For a while, I wasn't real crazy about trading because I didn't like being at my computer that much in the day-to-day -day interaction. I like a portfolio that I do adjust my portfolio, and but I would certainly wouldn't say I'm a trader. But the first book on this list is coming to my trading room, and it's really a great book as far as understanding chart patterns. I think that fundamental analysis is great as far as looking at asset valuations and that type of things, but I think that now technical analysis is there for us to use and take advantage of as individual investors, and you better believe that, you know, savvy investors, advanced investors, institutions, they're all taking advantage of institution, of, excuse me, they're all taking advantage of technical analysis in making their decisions of buying and selling assets. So I think it's really important to get an understanding of that. The next book is Millionaire Traders, and this is just fascinating. Uh, the authors interviewed 12 people who reportedly turned as little as $1,000 into fortunes. So anything like that, I find that it's fascinating. It also helps me better understand the mindset around people that become very wealthy from their investing. The next book on my list I do have here is Market Wizards, and this book is interviews, has interviews with top traders. For example, Paul Tudor Jones, who's very, very well known. William O'Neill, who did the book, uh, wrote the book, uh, How to 
uh, how, how, bleh, how to Make Money in Stocks, as well as Jim Rogers, the commodities book. So reading about how these well-known iconic investors got their start and what they think and their approach is valuable, I think, for all investors who are interested in this type of thing. Way of the Turtle is fascinating. Richard Dennis and Bill Eckhart did an experiment to see if they could teach inexperienced investors, and they called them the trader, the excuse me, the turtles, to successfully trade using a system-based model. So one of the turtles named uh, Curtis Faith wrote the fascinating story where he made more than 30 million in four years. So I figured that anybody can make 30 million in four years, that it might be worth the $23.75 to gain his insights from just mindset alone. So fascinating book there. And we know that investors invest with emotions instead of with sound principles. And this is traders often get tripped up over emotions. So I found these books helpful and insightful. The next book is by Garrett Gunderson. It's called Killing Sacred Cows. Garrett was a more traditional financial advisor who saw a better way when he was working as a financial advisor. And Garrett now teaches, he's now more of an entrepreneur and he teaches about alternative investing in business as well as real estate and different types of ways to make money as well as how to invest. And this book sort of helped me segue into an understanding of that. I'm going to go a little out of order now because Rich Dad Poor Dad is the book that really first opened my eyes to all this way back. <laughs> uh, it, this book does a great job of explaining how entrepreneurs versus employees make money and how they're taxed. And it really, really gave me a, a good understanding and made me want to own alternative assets that have tax benefits. And then this led me to Multiple Streams of Income by Robert G. Allen, popular, popular book way before it was super, super trendy to have side hustles and you know all the things that are going on now. This was maybe two, three decades ago when this book was popular and it laid the foundation for me over two decades ago. Yeah to understand and start investing in alternative assets. So there are some other newer books certainly about this, but this is a classic and it's one of my favorites. And then the next book on the list is The Black Swan. Now we're segueing from uh, these books over to books that I just think are really important books to understand if you're an investor, what they what they teach and how we can use this information to help us become better investors. And this is the black swan and the black swans are those events that no one could possibly predict that just come out of nowhere and how they can wreak havoc on our investment plans and how we can prepare for them and understand them better. Super, super book, so important to understand black swans and be prepared for them. The next book, super important, love this book, The Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. Listen to it on the way to Taos for a ski trip. It kept me entertained the entire time I was driving out there by myself. Fantastic book to help you understand centuries and centuries of economic cycles, how these uh, cycles repeat themselves over and over, how they have done this historically, and having a much more global perspective on how this works and as an investor, I would highly recommend that book. The next book is the Strengths Finder book, which you may seem, you know, may sound or seem odd to be on my list of advanced investing books. The reason I love this book is because if we want to do something other than simply buy and hold asset allocation investing, then it's going to take more effort and our skills come into play because there are skills required for these different ways that you can invest, whether that's simply just following an asset allocation model or hiring a financial advisor. If you don't want to invest yourself, what type of financial advisor do you want to do your own analysis or do you want someone else to analyze for you? Do you want to own alternative investments? 
what are your skills, what are your strengths around that? And the Strengths Finder was a great way to help you figure out what your strengths are. I think we kind of shy back from feeling like we have strengths because it just seems wrong or sort of vain <laughs> to feel like or admit that we, hey, I'm good at this. So the Strengths Finder will help you with that and it will help you find out what it is that you really want to do. I love using it with my financial coaching clients to help them figure out what is it that they really, really want to do. Do they want to self-invest, hire an advisor, have alternative assets? So good book. And the next book on my list is The Richest Man in Babylon. A little bit of a spiritual book. This classic, really timeless book from 1926 has fantastic principles about saving money, about investing money, about giving money. It's a great gift for teenagers for the holidays or for a graduation gift. Timeless classic book. Love it. The next book on my list is the one that I haven't read and the one my prop here is the new one I got. It's for business specifically for 2022 and I haven't ordered this new one yet. I had an older version of this on my bookshelf but I wanted to put this newer version that I found on Amazon in my article find something that will that you can just skim through and get ideas for lowering your taxes and you can research it further or talk to your CPA about it. It's what we keep at the end of the day that we can invest and grow. The next book on my list is Tony Robbins Money Book. Even though I don't particularly like or I guess I don't use, I should say, Tony Robbins investing strategy in this book has some great information about mindset. Again, Oh, it plays such a huge role in investing and Tony is just who is any better than Tony Robbins for that if he's worked with presidents and all sorts of famous people then I'm certain that Tony's advice could help me so good book there and then the next book is The Fourth Turning this book is uh, it was uh, written in 1997 and it predicted a lot of what's going on now. It will help you better understand the generational divides that are going on in our society. It will help you with your understanding of it in a way that will help you invest better because you can understand what's happening and what is more probable to happen and why all of this is happening. Excellent book, not only for your finances, but also just to understand the other generations that are in your family so that you can sort of know where they're coming from. Excellent book. And then the last book on my list is How to Be a Billionaire. No, I'm not a billionaire. And it's looking doubtful that I ever will be. But I love this book. I found it inspiring and very enjoyable. What I really, really loved is one of my favorite principles that's buy low, sell high. I think that principle is overlooked in a lot of investing now and it's overlooked in most asset allocation models which aren't based on buying low and selling high and I do love that principle which I don't necessarily apply to all my investments which is another video in and of itself but entertaining enjoyable book so those are the books that I have on my list of advanced investing books I'll put a link in the description to the article so you can check it out and or purchase any of the books that you've heard me talk about here Thanks for watching and remember, retire certain.